top CS2 content creators are quitting the game and have pledged to not come back until Valve fixes their anti-cheat. We have truly reached a breaking point. So who's leaving? How serious is it? And will it actually force Valve's hand to finally do something? All right, to avoid sounding too much like a broken record, CS2 anti-cheat, no work, hacker in every lobby, just play the clip. So as an example, this was the first game I played in a month. Okay, that was just bad by me. Now, before the major, I did a video talking about just how many CS2 players have been calling for a boycott of the game until Valve fixes the anti-cheat. Since then, it's been pretty much the same. Players are getting fed up while others are huffing copium. And instead of a big update, Valve decided to give everyone free injected wall hacks. Ah! But over the last few days, there has been a bit of a shift. You see, all this time, content creators have been complaining alongside us, but things have gotten so bad now that creators are actually releasing videos stating that they are quitting the game. Names like Anomaly, War Owl, and more are all stepping away until the anti-cheat gets better. So what exactly did they say? Well, the first of the bunch to release a large video about this was Anomaly. Anomaly is one of the game's OG content creators. He wears a ski mask, talks about skins, and, well, shit posts. But last week, he dropped a video titled, I Quit, which came shortly after having this lovely experience in Premiere. Oh no. Oh, well, our, our teammate is cheating. There's no way. <laughs> this, this game, this is, game so is cooked. Bye. Everyone is dick riding this game. I'm not gonna lie, bro. They're probably like 5k rating. He's looking at him through the wall. He doesn't wanna. <laughs> this guy's cheating as well. <laughs> now, in his video, he reiterates just how bad the cheating issue has gotten in CS2, but also points out how it's actually affected the content for the game. Right now, a lot of the content you see surrounding CS has to do with cheaters. All types of cheater content, from interviewing cheaters, to guess the cheater, to trying to catch cheaters, to just playing with cheaters. Like, it's everywhere on YouTube and Twitch, which isn't fun to see. That's a very bad image for a game. It's true. Most YouTubers are basically forced to make videos about cheating because actually playing the game is Nearly impossible, I can relate, until they fix this never-ending cheating problem. You simply cannot play the game without running into opponents or your own teammates who are blatantly hacking. The main job for a game like CS2 is getting rid of these internal cheats. Back Live, at the very least, could detect blatant cheaters, but since that obviously wasn't the case, it got some wondering if it was even on. Now, just a couple days later, Neok also released his own video saying that he was quitting, while also showing off the catalog of clips he saved from his premiere experiences. And just this week, another bomb dropped with the War Owl releasing his own video on the issue, where he gave a detailed account of just how bad things have gotten. So I suggest you give it a watch. But towards the end, he goes in on just how badly Valve all of this up especially in comparison to a game like Valorant. In every other game, to play the game the way it was meant to be played, you launch the game and you press the play button, and then you play the game. In Counter-Strike, we need to go through a third-party website, download third-party software, and play on third-party servers with a third-party rating system. This is a dramatic failure on Valve's part to create an ecosystem to play the game. Valve is as bad at making a matchmaking system as Bethesda is at making a game. They rely on the community to come in afterwards and fix it. Counter-Strike 2 was a huge opportunity to solve this problem. Now, what exactly does quitting CS2 mean in these instances? Because it's not as cut and dry as it might sound at first. You see, these creators aren't exactly quitting CS2. They're simply just refraining from playing Premiere or standard matchmaking on Valve servers. For the most part, they are still going to make content, play face it, and potentially open cases. Obviously, the knee-jerk reaction is to call all of this just a nothing burger, and I get it. But this game is their livelihood, so quitting it altogether probably wouldn't be a smart idea. Do I wish that every player stepping away from Valve servers also left the skin market? Yes, of course, but I just don't know how realistic of an ask that is since that's like how half the game's creators make their money. In the aftermath, these posts 
obviously blew up and started getting reactions from plenty of content creators who showed their sympathy. In fact, skin content creator Arrow went so far as to show just how bad the cheating problem might be above the 20K ELO mark. But let's look at the leaderboard. I'm pretty sure, this is not confirmed, but I'm pretty sure that if you don't see the number, then that means that they're either banned or it's just not confirmed that that's actually their rank. So now we see rank one to nine are not here. And what should be a thousand people that I could see, it's more like a hundred, or it could be private accounts as well. But why would you be, why would you be private if you're like a legit number one player in the world? Okay, now the ultimate question. Will boycotting MM and Premiere actually move the needle in any way? Like I said before, if you want to force Valve's hand, you gotta hit them where it hurts, their wallets. And unfortunately, the size of their wallet is affected far more by the sale of skins than by how active their official lobbies are. At the end of Neox's video, he says he hopes that Valve watches his video. And while I'm sure they're aware of all of these videos, I don't know if it's actually going to do anything. At most, if a lot more content creators follow the trend of quitting, Valve might release a statement, but even then, I'm not too sure. I'm not even memeing on Valve's lack of communication. I legitimately don't know if this is in their best interest to comment on it until they have a fix they're ready to ship. Coming out and saying, yes, our game is f right now, admits that they are knowingly allowing their player base to spend time and money on what is objectively a negative experience. And imagine what a prospective player might think. I don't know about you, but I don't think I would download a game if the devs released a statement acknowledging just how bad their cheating issue was. Valve won't admit to the scale of the problem unless they can also announce they have a solution for it. Even then, they probably also can't comment if they're working towards improving their anti-cheat or not. Yes, it doesn't directly admit that there's an issue, but it does potentially create an unrealistic deadline for them. It would also run the risk of just giving players the green light to leave until the update is dropped. If they confirm it's being worked on, why not just step away until it's done? Now, if they aren't going to release a comment, is it at least safe to assume it's being worked on? Well, I sure f***ing hope so. I, like many others, pray this is priority number one for Valve, which honestly, at this point, I'm sure it is. And you know what? Let's just provide a little bit of copium. I think there is a possibility that what they're cooking up could change the industry. Hear me out. Valve doesn't really like doing anything small. When it comes to releasing games or hardware, they love to push boundaries. The Steam Deck? It's one of, if not the most impressive handheld experiences out there. We didn't get a new Half-Life game. Well, they released what is arguably the best VR game to date. Hell, I spoke to a former Valve dev over a year ago who said that bringing CSGO to Source 2 would be impossible. And they did it anyway. Point is, Valve is very capable of doing big things. And maybe it's copium, but what if they're working towards an anti-cheat system that is the be all and all? A system so powerful, we never have to worry about competitive integrity again. But maybe, like the War Owl said, whatever they are working on should have been in the game already at launch. There's some conspiracies about the player count because the player count is like continuing to like reach all time highs at like 1.5 million. I think Arrow said that he's like at least 400,000 people are cheating. How can an issue be this pronounced that the game is seeing numbers better than Valorant? The other thing people are pointing out is that it's just all bots.